As promised, Derek Lewis, the Black Beast, the hometown kid fighting for the interim heavyweight title joining us now. Derek, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, just had a successful weigh-in. You are just a little over 24 hours away from uh, the biggest fight of your life. And I think this is interesting to discuss because so many people talk about Cyril Ghosn and his athleticism. I'm doing a show last week with Dean Thomas, Bilal Muhammad, and both of them said the same thing. Do not sleep on Lewis's athleticism. This guy's a great athlete. Do you think people have done that as we talk about this fight leading up to it? I believe so. They, everyone always underestimate me, my athleticism. But I like it like that, though. So, um, shit, that's part of my game plan anyways. Let them keep on sleeping on me. Nice. Derek, uh, Michael Chandler here. Man, obviously you fought here in Houston a couple times. What has, can you talk about what this, what this fight week has felt like? Obviously this time a, a UFC title is on the line. Fighting here in your hometown, can you tell us what it feels like this week? Um, it's been nerve-wracking, really. You know, the jitter's been there. But ever since, like, today, yesterday and today, the nerves been gone. I've been feeling like 100% ready, you know, I'm focused and really laid back now. It's already time to go. Yes, it is, and, and you're going to perform, obviously. I, I got to ask you something a little bit more lighthearted. Obviously, we all, we all see social media. You're hilarious on social media, having a blast. And also, we talked earlier about how you play possum in fights. Do you play possum when you're, when you're messing with your training partners? Do you set those traps up in training, in, in your actual training sessions to, so they translate into the fights? <laughs> No, that's that's something I always come up with during the fight. I don't, I never do it, that in training though. I always come up with something like that in the fights. Derek, what's going on, man? It's DC. Now, you are fighting Cyril Gan yesterday. You got up in his face at the at the press conference. What did you see? What did you feel coming off him? Because Dana kind of tried to get between you because last time you and Francis came together, it looked like y'all was about to fight and nobody wanted to try to stop you. But yesterday, Dana like came between you and Cyril, but then you're like, no, let me get up in his face. Like, what do you gain by being that close? And what did you see in Cyril Gaon when you got right nose to nose with him? Uh, I always like the um, smell of fear. I smell fear whenever I got up on him. I smell what he smell like yeah, I ate a burger too before that. <laughs> um, so I like to I like to get up on them and see what they like. You know, Derek, uh, you let talk, them smell my cologne. <laughs> Derek, you talk about your athleticism. One of the strikes that I think shows that is when you do that double switch kick. You do it all the time. Is this a, is this something you try to plan? Because if you ever knock somebody out like that, then I think the world is going to explode. But you throw it every single fight. I think you're just showing off that you can be playing basketball if you want to play basketball. Why do you throw that kick every time, Derek? Is it something you train? And are we going to see this against Cyril Gano this weekend? Um, that's just the, one of the keys to show you that I'm feeling good out there. So um, <laughs> you never know. Never know how I'm gonna be feeling, so I might throw something a little different this fight. Hey, Derek Lorsenko here. Um, tell me a little bit about you know this camp. I know recovery has been kind of a new thing for you. You said that you never really paid attention to your body a whole lot in previous fights. We know about the back issues. We know you've recovered and really, uh, you know, the knees are no longer a problem. Talk about this camp and the recovery and just how ready you are in this uh, interim title spot. I'm, re I'm super ready. You know, I've been, I can't get no more readier than this. You know, um, if I don't go out there and perform like I believe I can, then I don't know what else I could really do um, to my body to get myself ready. You know, because I did everything, dotted all the I's, all the T, cross all the T's. It's like, it's nothing else I really could do in my, uh, my career and to get me just um, prepared for this type of fight. I know last time we talked, you got kind of mad at me because I was trying to, you know, get those emotions to come out of you, Derek. Uh, but I got to ask, Houston Toyota. They trying to get me to promote Hollerhead without me getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> that was not me. That was a Howlerhead spot, sir. I'm not going to do that to you right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, listen, you know, Toyota Center, you've never lost in Houston, your hometown. Fat Pat, tops drop, starts Ooh. playing. What are you feeling? 
<laughs> I'm feeling the spirits of all the dead, dead and gone Houston rappers coming in my body, wanting me to represent, you know. It's a bunch of energy that's going to be going through my body. That's all. I love it. Hey, Derek, I, I know this story because I, I saw the story, but I want to give you the headline and let you tell our viewing audience this story. George Foreman <laughs> has Derek Lewis's car repossessed. Can you tell us what that was all about? <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did it. They did it. Um, it's all because he wanted me to stick to boxing. He didn't want me to do MMA. And I told him, um, let me just see how my first MMA fight goes, then I might come back to boxing. But I ended up winning, um, knocking a guy out. And I told him, nah, that's OK. I'm going to just stick to MMA. Then he said, all right, we'll be in touch. And that was it. And that's what happened. Well, yeah, I mean, that was it. Wait, wait, Derek, did you did you know? Like, did you just get out in the morning, your car was gone? <laughs> or did they at least give you the heads up, Derek? Did you at least, like, did, did you wake up in the morning and somebody was driving off with your vehicle? Just be honest. <laughs> No, nah, he just told him to come on and drop it off. Okay, so he was respectful. I, I got to be honest. If it was me, I would have repossessed it in the middle of the night. You'd have woke up with no car in your driveway. <laughs> that, that is a great story. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I rode it until it got on E, though. I rode it until it got on E. <laughs> when I woke up, a speed bumps real fast. I said, you come pick it up now. Like a rental. <laughs> He's crazy. Derek, how, yeah. how, about, how about a prediction for, uh, for tomorrow, my man? You are, uh, you're an underdog in this fight. You're in your hometown. You um, haven't lost here. Give me a prediction. Um, it's going to be a tough fight. It's going to be one of those fights that I know it's not going to be easy, not going to be quick. It would be nice to be quick, but I believe that I got to dig deep in this one and, um, and put him away just because they, he, he never been in a dog fight in – I don't know how he's going to react whenever he's going to get into this dog fight that I'm going to put him in. And so I believe that, um, that I can still put him away later on in the round, if not beginning of the rounds. Yep. All right, Derek Lewis, the Black Beast, uh, fighting for the interim heavyweight title tomorrow. Derek, we appreciate the time, my friend. All right, thanks for having me.